Okay, good evening. I'm going to call uh, this regular board session on Monday, July 18th to order. Uh, we will start with a roll call, please. Mr. Drewer. Ms. Larimer. Here. Mrs. Eubank. Here. Dr. Rufford. Here. Mr. Pullman. Here. Mr. Bennington. Here. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And as is custom, I'll start with the safety briefing. Perrysburg Schools welcomes you to the Commodore Building, and we thank you for attending tonight's Board of Education meeting. We care about the safety of our students, staff, families, and guests. Please note that there are exits on both the east and the west side of the cafeterias. In case of an emergency, an AED is located just outside the cafeteria doors. You are located at 140 East Indiana Avenue. Thank you for joining us tonight and supporting Perrysburg Schools. All right, so the agenda, the agenda tonight includes two uh, opportunities for public participation, the first being on agenda items, the second on non-agenda items. Later on in the meeting, we'll have a superintendent's report on a capital project update, treasurer's report covering year-end uh, fiscal results and some other topics. Um, and then we've got a host of personnel decisions to make in the consent agenda. Uh, and, and some contract issues to vote on. And then there's one non-consent agenda item to vote on regarding our stop-loss carrier. Uh, with that, we will also be looking for an executive session at the end of the meeting tonight. So with that commentary, can I have a motion to accept the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Dr. Ruffert, Ms. Larimer. And roll call, please. Dr. Ruffert. Yes. Ms. Larimer. Yes. Mrs. Eubank. Yes. Mr. Pullman. Yes. Mr. Bennington. Yes. No recognition tonight, so next item on the agenda will be public participation on agenda items. I don't have the list, so if anybody has signed up. Okay, I'm gonna. Is there a list back there? Do you have, do you have a agenda item? Okay, thank you. I don't think we have anything on the agenda. Okay. That'd be a non-agenda mm -hmm. item. But. Is it, I, so. I never should read the buzz <laughs> and the agenda at the same time because they conflate with one another. Sure. <laughs> which one's on which. All right. Thanks. So you'll be on the non-agenda. Yeah, it's not me. It's all the students there, too, that are okay. all the same purpose. So. Okay. Okay. Non-agenda item topics, it's a little. First time, so I'm not sure. Okay. It's, yeah. It's We're good. teaching learning, so they put down. We've got a relatively short agenda tonight, so we'll just go ahead and hold it till the end if that's okay. Okay, so with that, we'll move on, Tom, to the superintendent's report. All right, thank you. Um, so we wanted to provide, the, the summer is a time where, um, it, you know, for those that work year-round, it's, it's always interesting when people find out you work for schools, they often will say, well, how's your summer going? What are you doing this summer? And for those that work year-round, the summer is really an incredibly busy time. So. Um, we'll hear about the, the fiscal books close over the summer, and that creates a lot of activity for us. Um, hiring is something that um, continues to be uh, a challenge, and, and you know, trying to find staff and, and fill positions is still ongoing now. And, um, and then all the kinds of projects that go into um, getting ready for the next school year. Um, are condensed into those, those um, you know, just those few months. So with that, we wanted to take a little bit of time and uh, um, our operations director, uh, James um, Mapis, is here to, to walk us through some of the projects. And so I'll invite him to come up and kind of walk through some of the different things that are taking place to our, our facilities um, this summer. Welcome, Hello. James. I'll try to be quick for everyone. Um, so as Tom said, the summer is really busy for us. Um, I always look forward to the first day of school because everyone else gets busy and I can kind of breathe for a second, um, other than transportation and food service, which kind of picks up a little bit of momentum. But 
Um, this, this second half of the capital projects are never as exciting as the first half, because the first half we have a lot of different band instruments and things that were purchased that we really get to see with, that get to, to, to go back to our students. Um, this is not the case in the summer. It's roofs, it's paving, parking lots, and nothing fun or exciting, but things that we need to do. So um, that's kind of this, this second half of the December and July update. So one of the things we did for um, the boosters finished the second floor of the Huskin Center. Uh, it looks really nice. We have furniture up there. We're able to, to host meetings. And with doing so, one of the things we wanted to do was upgrade the boiler system so that it would be able to control that whole building. It was something that wasn't done at, right from the beginning. So we did spend the 2,164 to upgrade that that we needed to get going to have that whole building heated. So now that building is now air conditioned and heated as well. So at Frank, uh, anyone who's been to Frank in the, in the last recent, well, since it's been built, I guess, really, it has the old uh, tables that go in and out of the wall. There was a big push back when Jared's Law was passed to get rid of those, and then, of course, Jared's Law was repealed two years later. So this is one of those original buildings that has these tables. We want to replace those, so um, they're on order. We don't know when we're going to get them because, of course, uh, we, the district, also are faced with supply shortages, but we're hoping to have those by the first day of school. So um, I think they ship the first week of August, so we should have those as well for, for Frank. Tables did you get? To? So they're round tables and they have the seats that go around them. Um, we decided instead of going with the tables we originally had with COVID and different things that we were faced with, these were, were able to have set up for testing and different events. So it kind of spaces them out, but you get the same amount of kids around it with it being a round table. Okay. Roof replacement. So with the junior high, we broke that up into four different sections so that we're able to afford it and be fiscally responsible with our money. So we had an assessment done knowing that we need to do the whole roof of the junior high and broke it down into the four. So we started that first phase of the four. Um, you can see it's the 122-825. Um, they are halfway with that project currently and it should be done within the next two weeks. We bought two new district mowers this year for 29880 through the state purchasing through the Ohio School Council. Um, we got a really good deal on, deal on them. They're really big, large mowers. We're able to cover a lot of uh, footage quick. Um, so we were excited to gain those. We haven't bought a mower in the district since uh, 2005. Wow. Um, HVC controls at HPI. We currently have, now that we've lived in that building, we've been there for five years, there were some things that just weren't correct. Um, and so with talking to the company, we're like, what do we need to do to, to change these things? Some of our automation wasn't correct. Um, we had the systems turning on on the weekends. We couldn't control it as well as we wanted to be able to control it. So we had to spend the 24,970. We've already seen uh, with our group that we, we broker all of our electric and gas here in the district. And we then, in return, use a company called C Power that buys that energy back off of us for whatever we don't use. Um, and this year already, we've seen a return on this where they've been able to buy more energy back because we know exactly what we're using in our buildings. Uh, kitchen drain repair. Um, this one we found out because it was sussing up into the Fort Meigs Elementary. Um, we had a broken pipe, so we dug that up, had that fixed. Um, so it's just one of those unexpected things, but definitely needed to, to be done. The roof repair at the HAC, um, the cupola was leaking, so we had that whole uh, top part restructured. Um, it was more than, than just roofing, really. It was gutters, fascia, and things like that. So that was all fixed, so that's at 5,904 to get that fixed. Um, the reason that we found that that was really important to have fixed is we just, the boosters were kind enough to finish off the second floor and um, spent a lot of money on that project, so we wanted to make sure that it was protected. So that was why we, we went with that 5,904 to, to get that updated. Um, we purchased three new school buses. I'd like to say that um, they're all propane. We now will have 16. The Ohio Department of Education is going to give us 130,000 back from that 316, so um, we'll be able to recoup some of that money. Um, I really like the propane buses, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. I'm not sure how I want to answer that. I've been able to drive these um, almost on a daily basis this year. Um, so they're, they're really nice. We're, we're able to purchase propane at 98 cents a gallon versus the 517.18 for diesel. So we're, with those 16 buses, it's really 
we're really seeing a savings with that. They're really nice buses. I got to drive um, one of them with the mock trial to Columbus, and um, I went through half a tank of gas, and I think we figured out I spent like $14 and something. It was not much, so it, it was a great, great thing to save with the district, for sure. Um, so the air condition and heat unit at transportation in December broke, and so we had to update that. That was just one of the unforeseen things, so that was 6100 to get that updated. The parking lot at Toth, anyone who's been by there, that is tore out. This is on the back side where the, the playground is. Um, we were able to save where it says estimated cost and final cost. The one good thing is we were able to save the base so we didn't have to tear all of the base out. Um, so we only had to pay the 98000 versus the full amount if we'd have to tear it all the way down and rebuild it up. Excellent. So that roof, we, the, the Toth roof is also being replaced right now over the newest section of Toth. Um, so that as well we're doing in three phases. This is the first phase. This was the section that was the worst. So this year we're going to get that done. Um, that should be done in the next two weeks. Um, at Woodland, we have the north wall where the windows we started having where the caulk was pulling out of the windows and they just needed to be resealed. The windows were in excellent shape. So we paid the 29435 to have those all sealed. Um, so half of the building now has the windows that are all, have all been sealed. We're hoping in the next two years to do the other side of the building as well. At Frank this year, we had a return pipe that broke in the floor. It's a copper pipe that was in the concrete. We're starting to see a lot in Frank where we're having these issues with piping breaking in the concrete. So um, we've had to dig up the floor and repair that. They're usually done over spring break. We had a bathroom that we lost uh, for two weeks of school. Luckily, it was two weeks before spring break. So we had to close down the bathroom to get that fixed. But that is as well fixed now. Is that a slab foundation? It right. is, yes. Yep. So everything runs through the slab. So the only way we can fix anything is to go through the slab, which is unfortunate. But right. um, we were able to isolate them usually pretty quick and cut it, valve it, and get it fixed. Fort Meg's uh, pipe loop, we had an incident after Christmas break, uh, I want to say towards the end of January, where um, we lost heat in one of the areas. And we had to get <clears throat> excuse me, a pipe in to get it fixed. It was on back order forever. We finally got it in, got that fixed. So that was 4,183. It was kind of one of those unforeseen things that we had to get fixed up. Um, the stage floor at the high school, it's original to the building, so it's 21 years old. We're getting that fixed. Instead of choosing to go with a hardwood floor that was plank all the way like we had before, these are sections of a composite board that goes down, and then they'll be painted black over top. And then as it wears off, we just have to continue to paint it black instead of having the true wooden floor. Um, you lose some of that. We're actually on the floor to see that it's an actual true stage wooden floor, but from far away you won't notice it, and it saves us a um, significantly amount of money. To, to put a regular plank floor back in, it was going to cost us uh, around 190 so that's why we went this route. Oh, yeah, good idea. Do they last as long? The they do, yes. Yeah. Actually, they last longer because there's not as many joints, so oh. yeah, it's kind of a win-win. Right. The front half of the stage, you won't be able to tell. It just will be the back where it used to be, the, the black. Mm -hmm. So the HAC Victory Plaza, they just started on that last week. We, you'll notice that's at the um, right off the Huskin Center. Um, that's going to be to house all of our state champions for outdoor sports, football, cross country, soccer, and things like that. Um, so we just broke ground on that. A lot of that is with donations, and then just some of it is being supplemented by the um, actual PI. And what's on that one, what's the increase in cost? Was that scope change? Or was so that... unfortunately with that, a lot of it was the material that we're using for the plaques and the composites and all of the marble because of just the way the economy is right now, we saw a huge inflation with that. That's the only project that we saw major inflation with. We saw with one of our roofing projects um, with the type of rubber roofing, we saw a little bit of an increase. But we've been able to maintain right where we where we're at. And a lot of our projects we bid statewide, so it's not just us fixing a roof. It's several other school districts that go in as well to get a better price. So we didn't see too many on it, but with this this plaza, we did see a significant amount of we an increase. We won a state title between the planning of this, and I don't know if there's additional costs for. Uh, it added that. a little bit, but not not too much. But yes, we good problem. Good problem to have for sure. Yes. 
So and unfairly, I didn't point out the other projects where you were below your estimate. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so these are these are plaques. That was plaques. So it's actually a, a concrete wall that is going to be. It's a whole plaza that will be built, and it's at, for the state championship. And I want to say, I, I the. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, but it was the soccer parents from 2016 that put the money up to have it done. And then because of the inflation from when we started the project to now, we're just going to cover the, the difference. Yeah, so it'll recognize the, the, two, the it's 10, I think it's 10 years now, this, this fall, um, the, the soccer, girls soccer state championship title, and then um, girls cross country will be um, included with that. Correct, and, yep. Um, so mm -hmm. those are the two. So we, so we tell the teams to build the wall to win a state championship. <laughs> we, can, we really mean it. De, speaking of, of athletics and state championships, any any news about Blaze and the wrestling match? I haven't North gotten North an Dakota? update, not okay. yet. So, yeah. So the smoke relief upgrade at the junior high, um, there's a huge cost to it. As you can see there, there's a guy on the side. The, the purpose of this is if there were ever to be a fire in the auditorium, because of the way that the ceiling goes up with all of the drapes in that whole area, um, these levers will open up and then allow all of the smoke to release from the top. They haven't worked in several years, and we had a new fire marshal, and he said, let's do a test on this, and it didn't work. And so we called the company out, and the company said they don't work. Um, you're going to have to do something else. We tried to look at a couple different options. So this is actually a rebuild inside of what we already have with the existing. Um, so there's some retrofitting, but it was cheaper than just demolishing and starting over. Um, so the 205 looks like a lot of money, but it actually was significantly less by using what we already have currently in place there. And that's not something optional that we can It was not optional. No, the fire marshal said this needs fixed within, you know, X amount of months. And so that it got moved to the front of the list, obviously, as it should have. Or fines ensue. So any questions? Outstanding. <laughs> it's not the fun part of operations. It's kind of the boring. Uh, obviously, you know, coming into the school year, working with the band directors and things like that is more fun for for all of us in purchasing those things where you actually see the kids use them. Um, but it's all things that need to be done for sure. Yes, but what I, what I hear and what I always heard when I was on operations were, uh, well, I negotiated with the entire state so that we could get a smaller price. Um, we did this so that we could get a smaller price. We did propane buses because I went down to Columbus and back on a half a tank of gas. I mean, those types of things get overlooked and it is such an outstanding credit to you and your department at how you save so much money just because of your knowledge and your skill in doing all of this. So I, I thank you for that. I think you've got, yeah, I'm just amazed. <laughs> it's just amazing. You should run my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. We have a great team. I mean, all of our staff in operations, rather be food service, transportation, maintenance, we have a great staff that really does, they care about their jobs and our buildings and our facilities, and they do a great job of helping us make great decisions, and so thank you. Yeah, very welcome. Any other questions or comments? Thanks, James. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next on the agenda, Mr. Drewer. Now we really get excited. <laughs> well, it's happy new year, right? We're in the, for those of us, uh, new fiscal year. Fiscal, it's a, we're going to go back and look at 2022, but uh, we're already into our third week in the new year already. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to believe. So let me just, we're going to start, just kind of take a quick look back where we ended the year and, um, I want to point out just one thing. I don't know why I didn't get this corrected, but on here it says budget. It really should be the forecast because the budget and the forecast are not exactly they're not exactly the same thing. But we ended up obviously with 10 months of actual data and going into May able to update the forecast, and we ended up you know right where we thought a little bit more on the revenue than I had forecasted in May, and a little bit less on the expenses. But uh, overall, slightly over four million dollars in revenue greater than last year and slightly less than four million dollars in expenses so the the year ended up being um you know four million dollars 
positive. So we ended the year at just a little over $11 million in our general fund cash balance. Compared to last year, we were about $7 million, um, which is which is good. You know, that's the second lowest month of the year. We, you know, remember on our cash flow standpoint, end of February is our lowest month as we wait for our spring um, um, inc um, real estate. And so now here in July, those cash balances are building again because we're getting our tax advances. And uh, so far, it looks, it looks really good. So only thing to note is we've talked about the um, on the expense side, which is most of our concern, because that's where we have the most control, the, you know, the, the big item year over year was the increase in, co in supplies. As you can see, we spent 2.3 million versus 1.6 last year. So $700,000 increase. Part of that, um, as, I, as I came on board, is just was, bent, was pent up from a couple of years of not spending, and then right at the end of the year, fuel prices, we had to um, increase our credit line on fuel just to be able to, to get through the last two months, two months of the year. But uh, we are, we are obviously that's a, an area of concern. But and then, and purchase services again, it's down actually year over year, but uh, slightly had a, slightly more than forecast. And purchase services are dr the biggest driver is special education. There are some other things in there, but. Special education is the biggest driver of the, the purchase service line. So this, this is our cash flow. So yellow is where we ended up this year. So over the last three years, thanks to the generosity of the voters in passing that, that levy a number of years ago, it's, it, we're showing the fruits of that and, and ended up there. The purple line is encumbrances. So that's, and you'll expect, you'll see my report next month, you'll see it start over again and you're gonna see encumbrances. So at the beginning of the year, we're, we're encumbering money for fuel, you know, um, electricity, all those things we're know we're gonna spend and then that spends down as the year. And the key is to get this number, have purchase orders closed out so we know going to have that minimum amount of carryover from year to year. Remember we had a big carryover last year because we had ordered computer equipment in the spring and didn't get it until into the fall because of the because of supply chain issues. Investments, you know, one of the biggest one of my focus for this year is our investments. We've we're we're, we're trying to maximize our return, and this this chart shows it. You notice the negative in Huntington Bank, and we're we're addressing that. That's that's negative because that means our our fees are exceeding our earnings credit, and that's somewhat intentional because we don't. I'm, I'm better off right now putting money in, in Star Ohio and paying more fees with Huntington. And we're gonna ha we're have, actually have a conversation with Huntington in a um, week after next looking, looking at this. And then our commercial paper, our new investments, um, our booked value is down $101, but that, that includes some unrealized gains. So there's actually, it's like, um, you know, your, your house appreciates but you really don't see it until you sell it, right? So we've got some, some unrecorded um, gains there in that commercial paper when we sell that. Some of that next month, those earnings will go, go positive. But we are right now focusing on Star Ohio. Any spare money we have in Huntington is going to Star Ohio because we're generating you know, a little over 1% on that. So um, it's looking, I'm, I'm pleased at our direction at this point. So kind of end of year, I've already hit these hit these things, our revenue is up 6.2% year over year. The biggest driver, of course, is the incremental levy and income tax um, growth. Um, expenses were up 6.5% and personnel cost being 82% of that increase, which we talked about um, and the number of positions we've added and supplies and materials being the other main increase. So in the year ahead of last year's cash balance and we had a positive cash flow year. So a couple of things to report on for the year. This is somewhat, this is required. We have a credit card program. In fact, one thing, I'll talk about this more in a minute, but our credit card program, we, we, we realized almost $4,700 in rebates on our credit card, and we're looking to expand that in FY23. So obviously, 
you know, it's like any, if you have a credit card that you get points on or something like that, it's a similar type of process. A concern in the cost area is our cyber insurance. Um, James has been working really hard trying to get us the best coverage and the best deal because when we went into the, going into this year, our cyber insurance was going to double in cost for crappy coverage. Okay, that, that the crappy is a technical term. Um, I don't know if I can define it any better than that, but it was not very good. But we've gone out, we've worked with uh, some folks, so we're, it's still gonna go up about 50%, I think, year over year, but we're gonna have a lot better protection. And, there, and frankly, there's not very many options. There's, there's, um, and there's some reasons for that, some of which we would need to discuss more in a, in a safety plan type issue. But I have to say, we are doing some things internally that hopefully down the road will increase our number of options. Where, and, and our insurance should be able to be, in the long run, be a little bit cheaper um, as we do some things internally with our, with our networks and stuff. So banking, is, is we talked about, we, we put out a banking RFP at the beginning of May. We had four submissions, um, Huntington, Fifth Third, PNC, and Premier. A couple of local banks declined to participate. Their treasury could not support the amount of cash flow we have through the district. They're just too small. They don't have the supporting systems. Um, we have met um, Mr. Bennington, Mr. Pullman, and I have met. We're doing some follow-ups, um, and then hopefully here in the next month or so, we'll, we'll decide what we're gonna do. Um, just in general, Huntington's done well for us. We have some concerns on the fees side is, is the main issue with, with them at this point. And so I thought I would just share briefly from the fiscal office, some of our goals, um, so you have an idea going forward, I shared with the, with the uh, um, finance committee. At the top of the list, and this is, in, this is going with the long-term planning and the facility plan, we, um, we want to lay out more than five years, at least 10 years out, looking at some of our facility spending, where we're going to need to be. So it's going to be, that's going to dovetail or tie right into the facilities work. And deferred maintenance is a big piece of that. James has done a great job managing the permanent improvement levy, but that thing generates less than $2 million a year. For the number of buildings we have and the age they are, we're, there's a, they're doing a great, it looks good, but there's a lot of Band-Aids, so we're gonna have to address that. And the other side is the operating levies. We, we, we gotta look beyond the five-year forecast. Obviously, the crystal ball gets darker and darker the farther you look out, but we wanna at least start thinking about and how do we maximize um, our time in front of the voters and not you know, voter fatigue and dealing with those kinds of issues. And then you know, we ask those tough questions, what kind of district do we want to have? So this year that focus for me is going to be beyond five years, trying to look out 10 years, at least in terms of some kind of planning. Kind of next here is, as I communicated in May, we looked like about a 350,000 deficit in this next year spending wise. That's the forecast. That, you know, but we're not just accepting that that's going to happen. Well, you know, Tom and I have had some conversations about how can we address that? What things can we do to try to, to narrow or eliminate that, that deficit? So forecasting a deficit, but that doesn't mean it's a foregone conclusion, right? Ideally, we'll get rid of it. We've got some compliance issues, a bunch of small things in the fiscal operation practices. There's not, none of them are any big deal or not, but they're just things that, that sap time and energy and um, we're gonna work on, and, that, and one of the other things we're gonna work on are some efficiencies in my office, and this is kind of an example. We're gonna reduce the number of checks that we write. You know, I don't know how about you, my life, I don't think I've written a, a check in, in months, right? And, and checks have a problem in that they cost money to run, they take personnel time, and you have, they're a big, they're a um, gaping hole for fraud. Mm -hmm. So we're doing some things to reduce the number of checks we write, electronic payments, using the credit cards, that kind of thing. And the other thing then finally is just some cleanup of account structure. We have, I looked at it today, we have 11 pages of revenue accounts that didn't have anything deposited into them last year. We don't need, a, you know, so there's things like that that we need to do to clean, to clean some stuff up. So that's kind of the summary for FY22 and looking, looking forward to the new year. Any questions? No. 
almost exciting as operations, right? So. Okay. Thank you. We'll let you walk on back so that uh, we can move on. The, would you address real quick, so item 5. Point, is 5.2 June approval of financials. Well, it should be that at 5.4. Um, want an explanation of 5.3? Yes. Um, so we have these series of accounts called um, USSS, or Uniform School Supply, that the parents are paying their school student fees like. It's for the agenda book, science fees, stuff like that. And, and they go into each building, and those fees are used to pay for programs. So the agenda books, the, or whatever, that's an example. I don't know if all districts buildings are using them. They buy them for the students. It comes out of that uniform fees. One of the set of fees that we have is for math. And they're, they're collected at the building level, but the math workbooks and those curriculum is paid for out of general fund. So the money is collected in the uniform supply fees, and then we're returning it back to general fund because that's where it came from to spend it. Okay. okay. Unlike the other ones where, like, the art fees are used right there to pay for art they don't they don't ever go in the general fund or come out of the general fund so that's just that now that's um, going for for the new fiscal year we, we address that and these the fees will go directly into the general fund rather into the building so we don't have to, we don't have to do this okay okay thank you um, with that looking for a motion to approve uh, items five point uh, five point one and five point three so moved Two and three. Mr. Pullman? Two and three. Two is the approval of one. So we're approving one and three right. here. Yeah. Second. Thank you. And roll call, please. Uh, Ms. Larimer? Yes. Mr. Pullman? Yes. Dr. Reffert? Yes. Mrs. Eubank? Yes. Mr. Bennington? Yes. Okay, item six board committee and discussions. Am I correct in that finance committee was the only one to meet? In the last, since the last oh, personnel met this afternoon. Yes, we met prior to this meeting. Um, Mr. Pullman, did you want to? Oh, you're pretty much in the hen house with that. Why don't you give right. a report? So, um, Mr. Christie presented a lot of information. Obviously, um, there's a lot of moving pieces. Even as of July 18th, um, Perrysburg is not immune to the national educator shortage and the great resignation and um, it's starting to hit the district where it's hit larger cities. So some of these harder to fill positions, we're hard um, finding some you know, uh, staff to fill them, but specifically, we talked about food service, uh, things that are on the agenda, that it's just, it's hard to fill because the programs are not, people aren't there, uh, programs aren't here. And we used this example before, for example, when we had the science vacancy at the high school where we'd normally have 20 plus applicants, I think we had four, correct me, three or four? where the students, we just don't have the applicants as we would. Um, and as you know, if you look any research, the in, uh, number of students or college students going into education have, has decreased dramatically in the last 10 years. And it's affecting everybody now. So that's pretty much, but, but even knowing that, um, kudos to you and, and to the team for filling some of these positions and coming up with some creative ways to try to um, continue some of this uh, it's, their it's, bodies just aren't there, it's hard. You're pretty heavily involved with this over with your employer, right? Over at Toledo, I assume you're yes. living this daily. Yes, um, and it's, and we're just a larger, it's on a larger scale. So, you know, while we've been seeing it, it's now starting to trickle down to the suburbs. And I even had a phone call today from a suburban school wanting to know if I'd release a teacher from contract past the, the July 10th ORC date. So that was an interesting conversation, but it's hard. Everybody's out for the same pool of candidates and the pool is, rapidly decreasing. Uh, he also uh, reviewed the a ASL situation with the teacher. Mr. Hossler has informed us about the, uh, the information that's out there somewhat is not correct. The, the posting took place. Uh, one person applied, didn't fit the bill. Posting took place again, zero. And people were contacted, universities were contacted locally, other groups were contacted. Um, they're still working on it, but uh, the fact is that right now there's nobody out there to teach that full year. Mm -hmm. So contrary to what you might have heard in the scuttlebutt social media type thing, the truth of the matter is from Mr. Christie and Mr. Hostler, they've worked hard since I think it's May 13th in the first posting to fight, fill that position. Yes, what, uh, we had the same issue and I just I explained that as well. 
we added an ASL position and we had to go a very, very, very non-traditional route. Um, it's gonna take us a bit to get that filled as well. And, but we were fortunate because we have some internal staff uh, due to our uh, special education population that we were able to work with. Um, but it's, it's not ideal. It's, it's hard, it's hard. Okay, thank you for that uplifting report, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Finance Committee did meet on Friday. I think you've got the gist of it from uh, the Treasurer's report. Any other committees that I'm missing? Nope. Summertime schedule. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Our next item is going to be the consent agenda. Uh, this is going to cover items 8 through 13. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Mr. Pullman? Second. Dr. Ruffert? Mr. Hostler, anything you want to highlight uh, in the consent agenda here? Um, thank you. So um, just wanted to point out we do have um, a couple of retirements. Uh, first of all, um, Lyle Lazazda, who has been our, um, our food service uh, director, child nutrition director, will be retiring at the end of the year. So first of all, we uh, appreciate her giving us such an advance notice. To, to go out and to, to do a search. That's a pretty critical position. Um, and we've been fortunate to have her at the helm. Um, food service is something that operates almost, um, you know, it, it operates exactly like a restaurant. So all the revenue that they generate from food sales in schools uh, supports the workers, equipment, and, and buying the supplies. So unlike many other districts, which have to take money out of the general fund to support food service under Lila's uh, leadership and the team that she has there, they work very hard to provide that. And I think they offer um, you know, a great uh, choice, uh, healthy choices for students. So we have some students here, they could, they could argue that point, but chicken nugget day, the line, and, and so forth. So I think she does a great job of offering something that that folks want and she tries different menu items and that takes a little bit of courage to, to try it. So, um, so we're certainly, you know, going to, to miss her, um, you know, with, you know, with that. Um, also, um, uh, Mrs. Stein Miller's uh, resigning as the Toth principal and, um, you know, had an opportunity to go back to Springfield where we stole her from and um, two days before that July 10th deadline um, they stole her back. So we understand the reasons why and we appreciate her leadership. And um, we're also very excited to be naming Jessica Molina as the principal um, at Toth and she works on our staff. It has been a successful principal for, for over five years before coming to, to Perrysburg. So um, we were very fortunate um, that we were able to do that. So, um, so um, with the um, and, and then food service, uh, more expedient. Our assistant director, uh, Ms. Weimer, is leaving Perrysburg to become um, an EMIS coordinator in another school district. That's a, a critical job that coordinates all the student counts and all the different communication and data that goes between the state and, and um, the local school district. So she's very skilled and um, so that creates an interesting lineup for us with our, our number one and number two positions in that department, um, you know, changing in the next six months. Um, so, um, and, and just uh, in, in the treasurer's office, Pam Tyson uh, will be, again, appreciate her <coughs> giving us uh, warning, but J January 1st is, is going to be her retirement. She handles all the payroll. You know, we have over six or seven hundred um, people that we pay on a, on a, you know, almost on almost on a um, bi bi monthly schedule, and she's responsible for for making sure that those folks get paid and very accurate and, and also very vigilant with the uh, um, accountability piece. So that's that's a huge job, and I know Randy's already working on um, the ability to to plan for that. So um, so some important resignations and, and also some important um, uh, hires as we get closer. And certainly there's uh, supplementals are, are listed here. Um, those are the activities for this upcoming school year, um, programs and coaching and, and activities and um, a slew of new, new teachers. So, um, well, two for this, this one. So we appreciate the board meeting earlier in July that we could do 
our, you know, another uh, round of hiring. So um, you heard the date mentioned a few times about July 10th in Ohio. Um, you know, between the end of a school year um, and uh, July 10th, a teacher, let's say a teacher in Perrysburg wants to leave and go teach someplace else, they can apply for that job in May or March, whenever, and be hired without anyone's permission and then resign from the district. And as long as it's before July 10th, that person can, can do that, and that happens frequently. After July 10th, that person would have to come to Perrysburg and ask, to be released from their contract. And in past years, employees coming who are already employed in another district to, to come after July 10th, it wasn't unheard of, it did happen because there was always, if we posted on July 11th, there was always a deep pool of candidates that we could get from other districts or colleges and, and um, we would often let people do that. But what's happened is after years of, of you know declining um, students from high school going into education, um, education majors actually going into the profession after they graduate, people who are retiring and resigning, um, and some people are resigning and leaving education, we've had a number of those this year in our own district, um, that pool has shrunk and we, we've heard about that and it's creating problems across um, the country and certainly Ohio and, and here in Perrysburg. But after July 10th, um, posting a position, districts are not allowing people to leave and get out of their contracts. And in some years before, you would see that kind of happen. Now today, that's not happening. And if we had a teacher come to us today to say, I'd like to leave, we wouldn't be releasing that individual out of their contract because we wouldn't, there's a good chance we wouldn't be able to fill it. Um, so, so with these special um, positions that are very hard to fill, um, American Sign Language, Science, um, STEM teachers, you know, math, those are some that are more challenging, special education. Um, posting for a position after July 10th, you're really looking at people who, um, who either haven't applied or who just recently graduated or aren't without a job and looking for a job. And, and so that pool shrinks tremendously. We have a nice blend of teachers who are, who are coming right out of college, who are the cream of the crop. And we also have people that have taught a few years in other districts that aspire to be in Perrysburg as a, you know, this is the place where I want to be, spend my career here, retire from here. Um, and and um, so unlike other districts that are on that front line who don't have, who don't have people that necessarily um, want to travel like rural districts and I've worked in rural districts and you know though you know it's hard to find candidates to rural districts or urban districts where they just have so many positions to fill at one time um, we've always been okay and, and have been kind of outside that bubble but today um, you know it, it's it's hitting close to home so unfortunately it creates a situation where we have to make decisions the the high school team has to look at well if we can't fill that position and right now we have one position um, then what classes can we offer with the existing staff? And there's no good solutions for those. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, I know with ASL, um, not speaking for our high school principal who was a foreign language teacher who understands world languages and the importance of those, um, that, that I know there was a lot of um, challenges with that. I do know that there are continued conversations um, that were still trying to find a solution so we're not giving up on what we can do for the students that that um, you know that might not be able to have a class um, and you know we're hopeful we'll have some news maybe where that can come out but it's not anything that we can report to the board now saying this is definitely what will happen but I don't want to give false hope but there are still many conversations that are happening about trying to provide a, a spot before the beginning of the school year but certainly that beginning of the school year is getting larger and larger in the windshield. So um, we, we, were, we were really worried about special education. Um, we just put that final piece into place. That's another area that we were very much like the high school, what can we do with filling that position? How can we redo our existing assignments to cover what we need um, and get through? So there's been some other positions that we've hit, you know, that, that same spot, so. Um, but, you know, we're happy to be in a place where we are today and, and um, you know, 
it's not a great spot. We've never been in a position where we, we don't have a, a teacher at the beginning of the school year. In the 15, 16 years I've been here, that's never happened. We've come close with special education specifically a few times, but STEM and um, special education and now American Sign Language, we've been very worried. And, and Don, Mr. Christie, and the team have done a great job of trying to, to beat the bushes. I know um, our high school principal reached out to colleagues in Columbus because he was at Hilliard and asked um, in Hilliard, which has a couple high schools, they had an opening and said, hey, who were your number two and number three in your application process because we're, we're actually like calling those kinds of people. And the report was that their teacher, ASL teacher, left because they were one of the only applicants for another suburban Columbus district. And then they only had one applicant and um, there wasn't another applicant. So, and um, so that's, that's the steps that we've taken I had a conversation with the HR director from the Ohio School uh, for the Deaf that's, that's a residential based out of Columbus, asked her to, to put out in her network that we have a need and have been in contact. So, um, you know, those are the kinds of things that, that we're, we're continuing to try to do. In addition to some other things that, again, we, we have one more in talks with something right now that, that may be able to, to help with those uh, fourth year students. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll have something to report but you know that's something that's out of our control, and we need some assistance to make that possible. So, is it so, something yeah. that you look at that would perhaps like we'll take that course and like if you don't get somebody this year, next year that you know you just end up not offering it? I'm not sure of your. Um, well, is it something like, you know, obviously we've talked about people aren't going to school to be teachers. So if the pool gets smaller and smaller, and perhaps maybe not in Perrysburg because it is, you know, people do want to work here, is it something on down the road that you have to reassess and think, should we even offer this course if we cannot fill the teaching positions and not get the quality that we want to have teach these classes as opposed to like just an online course or something? I mean, is that you sit down and you look at stuff like that? Look at all that potential right there. <laughs> it, I'm not saying there's not yeah. a need that people don't want to take, take it. So, Obviously there so, is. I'm saying if you can't fill the position. Um, that, that certainly is something that comes into to play is the demand of courses. So if you have a program and you see fewer and fewer students going into it, you will see those programs eliminated. That can eliminate a position and that's happened over time where there's just not an interest in that anymore. Um, the difference about this situation versus like that, where you have registration that happens in December, you see the numbers, mm -hmm. you can begin to build a schedule without that in place um, and say, we only need you to be part time. That's all that this course requires based on the demand. And then you build your schedule and the students going in know there's only so many seats available. The difference was is there was an unexpected resignation at the end of the year on, on May 13th. The schedule had already been built. Things were already put together in place. So there wasn't that ability to adjust the schedule without disrupt, you know. So we have um, 12 or 13, maybe 12 sections of, of American Sign Language. Um, and those students are already scheduled. The classes are built. And at that point in time, the effort was to go out and find somebody to step in to do that. So now that plan B is now going into place where it's a combination of eliminating a course um, and then online courses um, being available for students that are coming into the program. So not the ideal situation, but um, that's at, at that point in time, that's the best that we can do to keep the program going so that we have time to, to go and do that. Otherwise, if we eliminate students coming into that, as a ninth grade, let's say we eliminate those sections of ninth graders coming in, um, then that, that begins to, to end that program mm -hmm. as we know it. Mm -hmm. um, because now that teacher is going to be working with the students who are year two, year three, right. and getting them. Um, you know, the do decision. People, do people now that are going into to ASL 1, do they have the option now that they know it's online to not take it? and take um, That's something Spanish they'll work with their counselors, so okay. communication has gone out to those families. So okay. if someone is saying, I'd like to, to move into a different class, different section, counselors will work with those families. Okay. Um, 
for students who are enrolled in sections two and three, um, the impact then is if you eliminate it, let's say you just did the priority with new students coming in and then the students who are in the, their last year, and I think there were about 30 students say in an ASL four, my understanding is that um, then you lose those students in two and three. So they're gonna be applying for college and they've only had one year of foreign language. So now they're scrambling to do that. So there's all these important factors. Students who are in their fourth year are missing out on certain um, you know, diploma distinctions mm -hmm. you know, as they can achieve that, um, the bilingual status. Um, so that affects them very negatively. So yeah. there's, no, there's no way to, to have a solution at this point that is not going to you know, you, we, have, we had a person that was teaching five or six sections, now that is not there. Right. Um, so we're still continuing to work on, on that, um, finding somebody, um, but also our priority right now is trying to restore that fourth section, you know, so we're working on a solution for that, um, short of finding somebody. So is there something that we can do to, to solve that problem and working on that, so. Okay, thank you both for the discussion. Um, we're gonna call the question, Mr. Drewer. Yes. Dr. Reffert. Yes. Mrs. Eubank. Yes. Ms. Larimer. Yes. Mr. Bennington. Yes. Okay, next item on the agenda is item 14, uh, other items for consideration on the non-consent agenda. So we are being asked to approve the stop loss carrier Stop loss carrier contract. I don't know whose who's ballywick is that in. Here's Mr. Drew to give us some yeah, background I can, on that. I can address that. It, so, you know, as, as you know, we're self-insured, right? So essentially we're our own insurance company. We collect premiums, board presents premiums, and we use it to pay for claims. But what we do is we have a, a stop loss carrier for claims that are over a certain threshold so that it reduces the risk. Because generally, you know, district, we don't have, it's not like we have, 20 or 30 high claimants, we have a certain number, so we essentially buy insurance that's gonna cover at a certain level. So essentially, without getting too detailed, any claims over 170,000, we're paying for it out of our insurance fund, and then the stop loss carrier would pay anything above that. And it's, um, it was a, it's a significant cost, but it reduces the risk to, to the district since we're, since we're self-insured. <clears throat> and I need a motion to uh, approve that agenda or to accept that agenda item. So moved. Ms. Larimer. Second. Mr. Pullman. And roll call, please. Ms. Larimer. Yes. Mr. Pullman. Yes. Dr. Refford. Yes. Mrs. Eubank. Yes. Mr. Bennington. Yes. Uh, now is item 15, board discussion. Any board discussion items to be raised? I wanted to pass along. I heard wonderful news from graduating seniors this year from the families that received the uh, letters from teachers and then the composite pictures from kindergarten through 12th. I think that's the first year that we've done something like that and um, the families just raved about it. And I wanted to po um, pass along that positive feedback. I hope that's something we continue to do. I know I, I looked at a couple of them at the uh, graduations I attended and uh, I got giddy about it and I uh, thought, oh my gosh, I hope they continue that for 2026 <laughs> and on. But yeah, no, I thought that was great and I wanted to pass along that. I heard it from several, several families. Isn't that the brainchild of Mr. Cookson? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. 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 No, good, good. Good, good point. You know, as a yeah. father of a graduating senior, that was a, kind of a surprise and just nice to see. And yeah. Put to my stand up. Sometimes I'm like, who is this? Who are they talking about? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Not your kindergartner. <laughs> okay, the next item is item 16, public participation. A lot of new faces in here tonight, so we'll kind of go over how we handle public participation at the school board meetings. First of all, welcome. The school board does welcome and appreciate public participation. Uh, your comments will be limited to three minutes. So we'll try and give you a high sign as we get close to that three minute mark so you don't just get kind of uh, um, cut off uh, too abruptly. Um, ask that you address your comments to the board, to me specifically. The board may or may not um, choose to respond. Well, the, the board, this is not a back and forth, so the board will not uh, respond tonight. 
I may or may not, or Mr. Hauser may or may not reach out to you depending on the item being discussed. Um, if you have anything to hand out, you know, please put it on the back table and we'll make sure that all the board members get it. Uh, probably the, the last comment then here for the board, and I guess for now I have, I have six uh, folks signed up for public participation. Is there anybody that has shown up kind of after the 530 mark that wanted to sign up that has not? Okay. Um, so we'll keep with these six. So our board rules say that we are limited each participation section to 15 minutes. If we go the full three minutes, that's 18 minutes. We did not have a public participation section in the first one. We can expand it with a uh, board vote. I'm just gonna say, you know, as a point of order, is there any objections to just going the length it takes to get these to, to great? Still here, no. Three minutes, you're saying? Three minutes, so it'll still be limited to three minutes, but uh, we don't need to take a vote or worry about the fact we're going over our 15 minutes, so. I know it seems like silly parliamentarian stuff, but it is important. So with that, I'm going to do the best I can now to read names here, and I'm going to hack up a couple names, so I'll apologize in advance for that. But just going down the list here, Jillian Trumbly. Oh. Have them state their names. I'm going to ask them, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. One other thing, so you're required to state your name, address, and affiliation. Now, I will say here, for the record, everybody but one has filled in their name. So I'd ask you to just state your name and your affiliation with the district. Hi, my name is Jillian Trombley. I am a student in the district. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the ASL students, the education of the ASL students at Perrysburg High School. There are around seven of us who are very interested in minoring or majoring in it in college. And this decision to not pursue ASL 4 will affect us. And I'm also wanting to speak on the fact that we received an email a week ago saying that we were not going to have ASL 4, and we were also not talked to about CCP classes. And filling in that gap in our schedule is going to be very hard with the limited classes because everything is pretty much filling up already because we were informed last minute. So I'm here speaking on behalf of the ASL 4 students that this is a detrimental loss to our education. Okay, thank you for your comments. Next on the list is Lauren, and I'm sorry the, the handwriting isn't clear in the last name. Lauren, come on up, Ms. Gortz. You can please state your name and affiliation with the district and Three minutes. Hello everyone, so my name is Lauren Gortz and I'm a student at Perrysburg High School. I am also an ASL4 class along with everyone who was fortunate enough and able to come here today with us. I also learned last minute, we received an email very late that ASL4 would not be taught. We were aware that our teacher was likely not coming back just due to what had happened. And I actually took an effort to reach out to some of the colleges in the nearby area when I heard that there were gonna be no options provided to us. We were simply forced to take another class or not have one at all. For example, Owens. We, I know that we already work with them in classes such as DECA, another class that I'm a part of in student organization. They offer ASL 1 and 2, fingerspelling, and inner sign language 1 and 2 as well. These could be options for us to take, and they said that they might be able to offer online options for us to fill the spot that ASL 4 is leaving. Continuously, BGSU had also previously offered ASL as a minor, and they are working tirelessly to accommodate their students. I spoke on the phone with both of the head of the language departments, and I'm hoping to receive more information back soon. If either of you or any of you would also like to reach out, I'm sure they would welcome you guys with open arms. They love to hear students taking an interest in languages. I have also contacted, as well as some of my friends over there, including Jillian, places such as Ohio State University, Kent, and Toledo, just to see what their options are and what programs they offer to help continue making young learners interested in ASL4 and previous ASL classes. Uh, on a more personal note, ASL is really important to me. I started my freshman year, which is the first year that we offer it, and I made a lot of my closest friends. However, that's not the reason that I stuck with ASL. I've continued taking ASL because I love learning it and it's helped me out a ton in life. 
I use it to help remember things for some of my other classes, such as AP US History and the exam that I took this previous spring. I've also used it to help communicate with friends when it's too loud and crowded areas such as the cafeteria for easy things such as, hey, do you want to go get food with me? And also on the lacrosse field, I have played lacrosse for a very long time, and I don't know if any of you go to sports games, but it often can be very loud and overwhelming, especially if you're playing. And there have been times when it's too overwhelming for me to speak, and I was able to sign things such as help, and I need water, and that it's hot. An example of this would actually be last weekend. I recently traveled 10 hours home. I was down playing a lacrosse tournament. Fortunately, we won all four games, but I did get overwhelmed, and I was able to sign to some of my friends, hey, I need a break so I don't faint because it was exceedingly hot. ASL has helped me countless times, as well as many of my friends and other students who I have talked to of all grades. And I would really appreciate it if you guys could continue searching and reconsider your options of canceling ASL4. We're much more of a community than just a class of people trying to learn. So please look into it more and consider reaching out to other things to at least offer online options. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gortz. Next up is Clara Birkin. And again, state your name and affiliation with the district, although I'm gonna guess. Hello, my name is Clara Birkin. Um, I'm a student, and if you can't tell, I'm also here for ASL4, my lovely little shirt here. Um, so for a lot of us, ASL is a lot more than just the class that we signed up for our freshman year. It is a community. As you can see, we all are here together as a community, as friends. And it's kind of a place to express ourselves. We have dedicated the last three years to the language, and none of us had planned for last year to be our last, for our last class with Mrs. Bunch to be our last class of ASL in the high school. I personally, have a lot of experiences with ASL due to my eldest sister, Hope, who was hard of hearing and also a great member of ASL. Like, I think this was her shirt before it was mine. Or I have a friend with a nephew who is unable to speak. He's nonverbal, so she has to sign with him, although he can hear. I also, as a theater kid, as a choir kid, as somebody who is very outgoing personally, I have just found ASL to be a completely different way to express myself, a more artistic way. Um, last year we had the opportunity to take, or to, one of our units was ASL poetry. And ASL poetry is something so unique and so cool and it has given me personally a way to express emotions that I didn't know I had or to just be more artistic with movement. And it's just been great with me and to share it with my friends and all those great people over there. It is also one of the most used languages in America because of our deaf community. It is the most used language among the deaf community um, after, of course, English and Spanish and Chinese and French. And those classes are classes you would never dream of getting rid of, of any of the classes. Of You would work so hard to find a teacher though, of those. And we actually will not now get a chance to earn our seal of biliteracy that I know my sister has in Spanish or that a lot of people I know could earn in French or Chinese or anything like that, we are not going to get the opportunity because they were supposed to finish our test this year even though it was supposed to be finished in 2020. They were supposed to have it finished for us, but if we do not get that fourth year, we will not be able to take that exam, nor will we be prepared for that exam. Um, and there's just a lot of uses for ASL practically in the world. Of course, my sister or nonverbal people, other than just the deaf community in general, which I plan in going into business, which will be very helpful if I can talk to deaf people. So for that reason, I would just ask that you reconsider all of the options that you have and you add us in the conversation as well, because I know some of us have ideas, last resort ideas too, like myself, I just want a period of signing. If we all sign up for a study hall and sign together, that's another option that we could have. But we would just like to be part of the conversation because we have our communications with each other and communications with other people and outside as members 
who are getting into the deaf community, we might have more to offer than that. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Perkin. Next we have is Jody Graham. Ms. Graham. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jody Graham. I'm here on behalf of my daughter Hayden. She is unable to be here tonight. She is in Philadelphia uh, this summer studying uh, classical ballet. So um, a year ago, she was an incoming freshman at Perrysburg. Uh, well, she was in the eighth grade at the junior high. She took French one. Uh, did very well, and even before uh, returning back to the Perrysburg area, she had taken um, French when we lived abroad in England. So she had that background, and her every intention was to continue in French while she was at Perrysburg High School. So then in the middle of the last summer, we discovered somehow she was dropped out of French um, and enrolled in some random art class, and that didn't really make much sense because she was already enrolled in women's choir, and as a freshman, she did not need another fine arts credit, but really, as a college-bound, high honor student, she wanted that language. So, um, uh, you know, one of her goals was to earn that five-year proficiency in a language, get that seal on her diploma. Um, we raised this issue with her counselor several times, and eventually we did receive an appointment. Um, so we met with Mrs. Burks, and she ultimately was not able to get Hayden back in the French two class that she was supposed to be in. Um, because this would have required her to switch her, you know, everything's a moving thing, but it required her to switch her biology class. And they couldn't get into another biology class because that was too full, and you can't have too many kids in biology. So she convinced her to take Spanish, because, you know, four years of Spanish would be as good as five years of French. It'll still look good, even though she wouldn't earn that five-year seal. Um, so she said, OK, fine, I'll take Spanish. The same problem happened. She couldn't get into Spanish because it would affect the biology, and that was full. So uh, she convinced Hayden to take ASL. And my, um, she said it would look as just as good on a college transcript. It was counted as your foreign language. In four years, you can earn that seal. And that was something that was very attractive to my daughter. After all, she wanted that five-year seal of French, but wasn't going to be allowed to have that. Um, so she took ASL, and she really, really enjoyed it. She met some really good friends in there, some of them that uh, you know, she became close to. And she planned on taking ASL as a sophomore and continued for four years. So. We were surprised, not very happy to learn that ASL is at least being dropped for year fours, but then is also kind of vulnerable to being dropped for my daughter. Um, rumor has it that other schools have dropped their ASL program. I know Bowling Green has. Um, so now it kind of feels like she, I don't want to say wasted her time, but to start all over then with another language when her goal was to get that five-year seal, um, you know, she's high honor student, she wants to go to a good college, and so that was really important to her. Um, so I just um, encourage you guys to keep that ASL program, let the kids finish what they started, find a way to make it work. Thank you. Hi, Thank you, Ms. Could Ms. I ask a quick question? I, I lost in the, in the train of thought there. Is she, is this coming school year her sophomore year or her junior year? Sophomore. Sophomore, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list, Laura Menke, Ms. Menke. Laura Menke, 950 Lober. Um, I have a lot of connections with the ASL community, and I would express, I'd like to express how imperative it is if Perrysburg is not able to fill positions, that you reach out to members of your community to ask them to help you, because you don't know who is in the community that has some unbelievable ties. ASL is the third most commonly used language in America. Our ASL students are on the forefront of inclusion of students and community members who would otherwise be overlooked on the daily DEI checklist. Do we have procedures in recognizing and serving those in our community who are profoundly deaf or limited in hearing? As you can see, we have some very 
forward thinking students who are going to get the job done. They have taken time, some of them during vacation, on finding universities and other sources to help them out. I have seen firsthand these students outside the classroom using it on the field and in the, their community and wanting to help. And I know specifically of one of the students here who is trying to pursue a future career in which they can use ASL every day to help other people. Um, I think it's a shame if we have fourth year students who will not be receiving their biliter bilingual literacy seal or their honors diploma due to not having those requirements. Again, and I've talked about this before, I feel that the class of 2000 or 2023 has had a couple of dings against them and this is another one. We have approved the cost of deaf services and contracts tonight that every use is a minimum of $200 plus the cost of travel and lodging for a company out of Pensacola, Florida. Perrysburg is a destination district for teachers. Hopefully we will look at independent study and also we will look at the ASL community and using the opportunity to have a temporary licensure for at least somewhat, I don't want to say of a Band-Aid, but a solution for this year until we can come up with something. Kent State is probably the premier university in the state of Ohio for not only ASL as a modern language, but they have a degree for special education in deaf studies. So that being said, there is a challenge for our administration and our board to come up with a solution before school starts. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Menke. And last is Damon Gortz. Yes. Yes. In name, affiliation, and, and three minutes. Be my please. daughter who spoke. Um, very proud. Good job. All of you guys, tremendous. Thank you guys. As for you coming. should be. Yes. Very, very, well, very good. Um, so I almost made it four years of never having to come to a school board meeting. And if everything had gone right, I still wouldn't be here. Um, but there's a lot of passion to help these kids out. Um, don't have a time machine. Not trying to figure out how we got here, but how can we make it better? Um, so I dropped off a document for you. You said you guys are having trouble sourcing candidates. Um, on there is the contact information for Becky Munhall. She is a PhD professor for Ohio University that teaches sign language and her kids are the ones that go on to become teachers. She's offered to try to help out. Um, one of her kid, two of her students, she thought she might be able to find some ways if we're able to do an online option. She's willing to help out. Um, she also put me in contact with the Ohio School of the Deaf. I know you reached out. I spoke to Kim. She said they do have an online option. They don't currently have one planned. She's like, but nobody's requested. She said, if you guys reach out to me and move and quick and hustle, we may be able to find an online option. I don't know how, I don't know what the certifications, just a parent, but I'm hoping we can do something for these kids. These are the last of the COVID high school kids, the ones who lost their plays, they lost their sports. They've spent all their sophomore year online learning. Um, I know we're trying to help the sophomores and the juniors. As we said, like a hard choice had to be made, um, but because of that hard choice had to be made, it's the class of 2023 again that is once again impacted. And so I'll just ask, take a look at the document, make the calls, arrive at a solution. Um, it's hard, you guys have a hard job. I appreciate everything you do. I was once asked if I'd ever run for a school board. I said I would pay money not to, and I stand by that. Um, so I hope that you guys can find something. It's just, we just can't say, hey, it's too hard. We can't find someone. We have to. It's just not an option to fail for the kids. So thank you. So before we end public participation again, I'd like to thank you each for coming up and speaking. And sure. All right, hello, my name is Olivia Minky. I'm also a student at Perrysburg High School. Um, my freshman year, I took Spanish and ASL and I did Spanish for three years, and I did ASL for two, and then junior year I decided that 
ASL was my language and I was gonna continue with that. So I dropped my whole Spanish seal of biliteracy and everything just for the ASL program because I was in love. Um, so now we're on to this year and now um, obviously we can't continue the language that we're all in love with. And I think that's just something that we've really been stolen from and everything. And I think what obsesses the most is we feel like this, there was a lot of foreshadowing that we weren't gonna have a teacher this year. Like, there was a few months. I think as soon as our previous teacher, who was recently, um, was taken off, um, was suspended, I think we all knew that we needed to start looking for a new teacher. And that wasn't really started as quickly as it should have been. And then on top of that, the job listing for the ASL teacher um, it was only up from May 14th to May 19th. That's um, five days. I don't think many people are looking that small of a gap for like five days isn't very much. So, but I also think there are like many other things to take into account. I think an online class, if you can't offer us a class in person is the best option because taking away that last year for us to gain our biliteracy I think is a big deal. And I think biliteracy is a bigger deal than you guys are letting us off and you're letting twos and three continue, which I understand that threes can get their, um, they have a school seal they can get if you take three and twos is obviously the state minimum that you're supposed to have. Um, but fours for us, I feel it's just as important and you guys are just kind of letting us down on that. Um, so if you would reconsider and at least try to put in your best effort to try to get us this class, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Well, again, thank you all for your comments and, and for the respectful tones with which they were delivered. Appreciate this board, certainly appreciates kind of hearing not just the instructional impact, but the personal impact that this has. And I know that the administration is committed to working through that resource as you'd heard in the discussion today. And uh, you know, one of the things I'd written down that really compels me is, you know, please uh, add us to the conversation. So again, thank you very much. That will end public participation. And uh, next item, so we have an executive session, a request for an executive session for the purpose of appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employee or official. Uh, there will be no other decisions after this, or no other, uh, no other votes after this executive session. So can I have a motion to go into that? So moved. Ms. Larimer? Second. Ms. Eubank. And roll call, please. Ms. Larimer? Yes. Mrs. Eubank? Yes. Dr. Reffert? Yes. Mr. Pullman? Yes. Mr. Bennington? Yes. Okay, we are now in executive session. The board can take a five minute break.